I met Annie at uh, a residency in 2007. We ended up sharing a studio uh, and bonding over long conversations in the shed. Annie and Cathy have been friends for some years, so it was uh, the, the awareness of conversations around our practice that, that the show emerged from. It's, it's actually the title of a poem by R.S. Thomas. We came back to that title as being something that just was exciting without telling the viewer really much what was you know, going on in the show. I think it had a lot to do with being three women artists as well, and that there was a, a sort of surplus vocabulary in, in our work where it's actually a thing that you're perhaps not supposed to talk about, which might be some kind of uh, um, magical or mytholog mythological sort of influence of things. There's something quite ritualistic about the work, something about the influence of being in nature. It's this kind of idea that the, the practical, the political, and, and a sort of mythological space sit right alongside one another, almost nest into each other. my work I tend to um, respond quite strongly to things that already exist in culture. This piece is called The Gaper. I've been interested for a long time in a saint called Saint Copertino. He was the uh, patron saint or is the patron saint of astronauts uh, known for his levitation skills. Copertino was called uh, The Gaper because he was um, found mainly for his um, mouth to be open um, in, in wonderment in his life. And um, my intention was to work with a kind of tradition of, of um, religious carvings. I wanted him to be um, outside having a, um, a kind of inward and outward moment, sort of um, arrested but kind of transported in some way, like, a, like an astronaut. The, the embroidery is a is a kind of uh, a kind of ritualistic object that might aid that kind of uh, voyage, if you like. A lot of my work has a kind of ecclesiastic sort of vocabulary, so um, things like church carvings and um, you know embroidered cushions. But also, I'm really interested in in objects where it's like it has a sense of affiliation. Objects that might belong to um, clubs where um, it, it kind of marks you as to where you, you might belong as, or don't belong, as, as it might be. I moved to uh, a, a rural loca location um, in 2012 after being 18 years in London. From being uh, a a sort of more studio-based artist. I've started making work out, outside and out in the landscape and, and with the landscape. This is uh, a painting that I made uh, on a hill on a very sunny day, basically made from, from berries, just literally drawn onto the paper, collected from just around where I was making the work. So it has this sort of really practical, down-to-earth materiality to it. This um, is, is a triptych of videos which is called Forage and it's very simple documentary footage of my eating cherries, wild cherries and um, wild strawberries and blackberries. Video is a new uh, aspect to my practice. I've really only started making any videos since this move into uh, the countryside in, in 2012. There's a lot of rustle and bustle and energy uh, to the sort of its lots of eating noises and things like that. I think it is something about bringing that liveness into the gallery space. It, it, it allows me to uh, bump up against that reality um, and that um, vitality, I suppose. We're sitting in front of um, my installation called Harmonium, which is um, 
a collection of narrative scenes, objects that can exist in their own right, but for this show, I've built um, an installation and they're all part of one work, almost like a, a huge collage. It's like, it's like preparing the ingredients for a meal that you're going to cook. So um, I've selected things very carefully beforehand. So I know that I've got um, the right things to offset each other. A lot of the work originally have stood on its own as separate pieces. And each scene is very dense and layered and uh, made using uh, made and found elements. So to then put them into another structure in a way it cancels out all of those narratives because it becomes one formal object and you take on this mass. All the images actually come from really diverse sources, so some of them might be from uh, 1970s ladybird books, um, some of them might be from 1970s animal behavioural experiments or um, high art references, uh, little bits taken out of a Bruegel painting, for instance. So they, they come from all sorts of different worlds, high and low culture. What they have in common is a, a, quite a, a dark, um, emotional, um, psychological undertone. It's really all about the, the power of objects to uh, engage and disturb. Um, and I'm really interested in engaging, in, in bringing the viewer in and then kind of holding them back as well.